chemtrails, or geoengineering, shocking and rare Phoenix air quality test results. Here is certified data on air tests performed in the Phoenix area. These charts show a number heavy metals are present in the environment at levels far exceeding the safe toxic level standards for human health. The person who performed the air sampling had it analyzed by a professional laboratory, and has asked for confidentiality. Exact location in Phoenix of the samples collected and names involved will not be disclosed in this report. Scans of the laboratory results were sent as files of more than 1 megabyte in size each. Each chart has been reduced in size here to fit on your screen by this author. One chart was rotated for proper orientation but has not been altered in any other way. Data Collection Method A. Air was sampled through an air filter which operated approximately 4 hours during the day and 4 hours after sunset for 28 days. B. Method used by the test laboratory was defined as ICP scan, in organic analysis. C. Short columns in the charts indicate the maximum safe level for a given metal. Tall columns are the measured amounts found in the filter for a given metal. D. MCL equals maximum containment level. E. Chart values are shown in parts per billion. To convert any reading to parts per million, which is often more convenient for a mental comparison, simply drop three zeros from any value shown on any chart. F. I have provided the calculations on how many times each metal is over each toxic health limit. For example, in figure 1 barium is 278 times, or 278 x, higher than the toxic health limits set by federal standards. Fig 1 in this chart we see that barium is 278 x the toxic limit, copper is 98 x the toxic limit, manganese is a staggering 5,820 x the toxic limit and zinc is 593 x the toxic limit. Noteworthy here is that manganese is an element commonly found in the environment and soil in small quantities. However, manganese is also a toxic element. This element is the black electrolyte material found in batteries, dry cell types, before the advent of alkaline batteries took over the battery market. Manganese is still used in cheap batteries and commonly provided with remote controls. Barium, copper and zinc are also heavy metals. Copper and zinc are used by the human body's metabolism but only in very small amounts. Barium is a common contrast agent used for X-ray diagnostic imaging, but it is not used in powder form. It is suspended in a liquid form for contrast enhancement of X-rays to outline digestive tract soft tissue. Barium and aluminum, more on aluminum later, are commonly found in chemtrail fallout. These two compounds were also described by Dr. Teller in his weather modification paper as two possible agents that could be spread by aircraft into the upper atmosphere. His intention was to use them as reflective agents for sunlight in an effort to reduce global heating. However, anyone who has ever been inside a tent an hour or more after the sun comes up on a cool day knows it will get hot inside quite fast. It could be that Teller's theory is flawed and that instead of reflecting the sunlight barium and aluminum are accelerating global warming. After several decades of chemtrail spraying where the records clearly show our planet is not cooling off. The US Army announced the problem is with the sun and that global warming is not directly caused by civilization. In images 2 here we see that cadmium is 126x the toxic limit, Chromium is 282x the toxic limit and nickel is 169x the toxic limit. Note that the permissible amount of cadmium in the environment is equivalent to a tiny 10 parts per billion. These metals are commonly used for steel manufacturing and electroplating. All are toxic in significant amounts. Figure 3 here aluminum is a staggering 6,400x the toxic limit, iron is 28,000x the toxic limit, magnesium is 5.3x the toxic limit, potassium is 793x the toxic limit and sodium is 15.9x the toxic limit. Special test results for aluminum. 
according to the reader providing the data, for unknown reasons aluminum results are commonly provided by an out-of-state test lab. It's also interesting that of all the contaminants, aluminum had the highest reading of all metals over the safe toxic limit by 6,400x. I will not comment here on my opinion as to who may run that lab or the data source, but will leave that to the viewer's imagination. As bad as aluminum being 6,400 times the toxic limit it may also be that the actual level of aluminum is far higher than what we see here. Although physically lighter in weight than steel or other metals, aluminum is still considered a heavy metal. Like Teflon registered, aluminum is very difficult to remove from the human body. It is also well known that for unknown reasons, aluminum has been found in higher than normal concentrations in the brains of deceased Alzheimer's patients. It is also known that Alzheimer's disease is on the rise. Perhaps finally a connection can be made here as to the source of the illness, but more science would need to be done to confirm this. A correlation between aluminum levels in the air for various cities and Alzheimer's statistics needs to be made. This is outside the scope of this report. Clearly, there must be a source for these very high levels of heavy metals in the Phoenix environment. It could very well be a direct result of chemtrail spraying, since the trails have been commonly seen in the sky over Phoenix and other cities. If these levels are elevated in Phoenix's air, it may stand to reason that the same problem is happening all over the country elsewhere. It's quite possible that these various metals are elevated in different amounts in the air over other cities. More tests like this are needed for other cities, with their sampling and analysis performed in the exact same way to allow proper correlation. Future test results I strongly suspect that once this report is public and those behind the chemtrail spraying see this, obtaining similar laboratory tests in the future may become more difficult. A cover-up may even take place if certain corporate or government interests are threatened by this revelation. Anyone having similar rare tests performed by a laboratory in the future should stay at the test lab for as long as it takes, and watch the test results as they are obtained from start to finish. If they will not permit this then find another reputable laboratory. Leaving the laboratory and returning for the report, or accepting an email of the test results is not wise. It may result in altered or lost test results. These lab tests could serve as a rough guide as what to expect from air tests in other cities. For example, if aluminum or barium levels are stated as near normal for lab tests of air in other large cities, those results should be suspect. I would not recommend that an entire air fill to be given to any one test lab, but rather carefully collected samples that have not touched by human hands from the filter. Laboratories only need very small samples to complete an analysis. This will allow the tests to be performed by other laboratories in the event of suspect results. This is a very rare air quality test, please share it out there on all social media, chemtrails are real. The lab results here along with water and soil samples from certified lab see link at top right of the video, prove beyond the shadow of a doubt, that metals are being sprayed on us like bugs. Just look up people. Please share this video. The lame stream media will not report on chemtrails and everyone is so busy looking at their cell phone, no one looks up anymore.